Hello, and welcome to episode 108 of Things I Learned from Barry Harris. And today I thought we would continue uh, what we were continuing with on 106, episode 106, which is discussing which scales of chords we use over diatonic chords. So for instance, if we're today, I think what we would do is just take a basic 2-5 in the key of C, which would be D minor 7 to G7, and then to uh, C major. So let's take a look at all the different things we could do. The first chord we'll tackle is D minor 7. And again, the point of this is to be able to say, by the end of this, or by the end of our studies, which is never ends, but by continuing with our studies, what we need to do is transform our thinking from chord to scale. Because scale is bigger than chord, and scale is more important than chord. So Barry likes to think of this D minor 7 as the four notes that happen to be in the F6 diminished scale. So the first thing we learn is that every minor 7 is a major 6. So we do every minor 7 is a major 6 of flat uh, minor 3rd higher. Okay? So D minor 7 and F6 are exactly the same. But the important part that you have to know is that this D minor 7 comes from this scale, this F major 6 diminished scale. That comes from that scale. Which means when we see this D minor 7, we have to think all the beautiful things that we know in F minor, I mean F6, all the beautiful things that we know in F, F6, these are all important. When a piece of sheet music says D minor 7, we know that we could do all this F6 stuff. Now, that was just some drop twos, but that's everything that you could do with the scale, which includes contrary motion, which includes oblique motion, which includes um, uh, parallel motion, which is what I'm doing with drop two. And, and just as an aside, and a, a very important aside, I, in my heart, the person that sees this the best on our instrument, on guitar, is Tom Seckles. He sees it the best. I've never seen anybody else see it the best. I have friends that are wonderful guitar players and all the usual suspects that we all know that are great guitar players, and I think he sees it the best. I think he sees it the fastest. I think he understands the logic behind it. So definitely check out Thomas Eccles and Labyrinth of Limitations. He's taught me a lot about this. So I'm just, in a way, I'm just repeating a lot of the things that he taught me. But, so we got this F6 diminished, which is beautiful for the D minor seven. Now comes the G7, and the G7 is beautiful. So the G7, we need to think of like this. Where does the dominant come from? So if we take Barry's theory, which starts off with the uh, chromatic scale, it's a universe, then man and woman, which are the two whole tone scales, and then the man and woman have babies, which are the diminishes, the three diminishes. So this G7 comes from a particular diminished. Let's just call it A flat diminished, just for a second. We'll call it A flat diminished. So this G7 comes from A flat diminished. But that means there are some other things attached to this A flat diminished. For instance, uh, let's play G7. So we think, okay, G7 diminished scale, that's something we can play. And what a G7 diminished scale is, is the four notes of G7 and the four notes of A diminished. So the four notes of G7 and the four notes of A diminished come together and form this beautiful eight note scale that is gonna give you G7, A diminished. Now another G7, another A diminished, another G7, A diminished, and so on. So that scale we can use on G7. So here's our D minor or F6. Now here's our G7. Really pretty. G7 diminished works. Now let's go back to the original A flat diminished where the G7 came from. Now also when we um, lower each note, we get we're gonna get a couple others. So like if I lower the D to D flat, now I'm gonna get D flat seven. So D flat 7 and G7 are family members. They come out of the same diminished. So now we think D flat 7 and its diminished that we do for 
for various scale. It was going to be four notes of the D flat seven, four notes of E flat diminished. You put them together. Here's our eight note scale, a D flat seven diminished. Now that's another scale that we can use. So let's try to use that. So here's F6 for D minor 7. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Here's F6. Beautiful movement. You see? I'm not just thinking one chord as G7 or D flat 7, I'm thinking that four note series of notes comes from an eight note scale. One of them was G7 diminished, one of them was D flat 7 diminished. Now let's go back to the original A flat diminished where these dominants come from. Another thing that Barry says, which is interesting, is he says, and I hadn't heard people talk like this, I know people talk about the four notes of the dominant, but on this same diminished, if you raise a note a half step, you're going to get, let's say if we raise the A flat to A, we're going to get a D minor 6. So wait a second. That means G7, D flat 7, and D minor 6 are all family because they come from the A flat diminished. So I should be able to play D minor 6 diminished. And isn't this funny that here's our D minor 6 with the G in the bass. As guitar players, we play this all the time. That's G9. We play that all the time. But what we didn't realize was this four notes of a B minor 7 flat 5. A minor 7 flat 5 is the same as a minor 7 in this sense. Every minor 7 is a major 6. Every minor 7 flat 5 is a minor 6. So this B minor 7 flat 5 is D minor 6. So that means, really, we could play F6, which is D minor 7, to D minor 6. So we got just this little movement. Isn't that pretty? Just one note moves. Listen. Beautiful, right? It's just such a pretty little movement. But it's so important to know this. Now, when you think D minor 6 and it's diminished, which is E diminished, the four notes of D minor 6 and the four notes of E diminished, you put them together, you have your scales of chords. There you go, there's your D minor 6. It also means not only doing these drum two parallels, it means borrowing, which is where you come up with all these beautiful... So here's, here's D minor 7 or F6. It's really pretty stuff. And this, this chord, see... If I had somebody look at this chord, they would say, oh, well, that is, compared to G, that is a flat 5, the flat 7th, the ninth, and the 13th. So they would say, that's a flat 9, 13. And I would say that that is true, but what's more important is it's from this scale of chords. See, it almost makes the fact that it's flat 5, 9 insignificant. Because it could be anything. It doesn't matter. I could borrow any notes and it's going to sound beautiful. I could play this. It's beautiful because I know I'm borrowing notes. This is pretty stuff to play. All that stuff is pretty. Now, and it's all going to have an attachment to it. You could say, oh, it's this note. It's a flat 9. It's a sharp 5. It's a 13. It's a flat 13. It's this or that. But that is irrelevant. That's nice to go back and look at afterwards, but this is where all this stuff comes from. This is more important than labeling what it is. Labeling what it is is an afterthought. This is the first thought. So, okay, now we have G7, because it came from the A flat diminished, D flat 7, because it came from the A flat diminished, D minor 6, because it came from the A flat diminished. Let's do another one. So let's raise, here's A flat diminished, we'll raise, let's say, the D diff to uh, E flat. That gives us A flat minor, A flat minor 6. That A flat minor 6 comes from the A flat minor 6 diminished scale, which is a coupling of the four notes of A flat minor 6, four notes of B flat diminished. You put them together, you have your scale. The scale is more important. Now, if I put this A flat minor 6 over G7, as guitar players and piano players, I'm sure, we've played this chord a million times. We would call this a sharp five, flat nine. 
and we'd be done with it. But what Barry introduces us to is that is not, we're not going to be done with this at all. This comes from this scale of chords. And I'm just playing them in drop twos. But that means you can borrow, people play this chord all the time, which is just basically the sharp five and the flat nine, but then they do raise nine first. But they never do this. And that you could do if you knew your scales of chords, because now I'm borrowing two notes. So listen, here's D minor seven. How beautiful that is. So now that's A flat minor six diminished and all the things we know. Suppose I did, I want to do some contrary motion. So what? Isn't that beautiful? That's contrary motion on the A flat minor six diminished. I'm not even thinking G7. I'm thinking A flat minor six diminished. Why? Because A flat minor six, D minor six, G7, D flat seven, they all are the same family. They all come from the same diminished. This explains every, I think it explains every possible alteration to the G7 chord you're ever gonna make, ever, is gonna be from that diminished. You see why the diminished is the most important thing? The diminished, because all G7 is not even the most important thing. The diminished that G7 comes from is the most important thing, which is why we know G7, D flat seven, and we did D minor six and we did A flat minor six. Now there's two more dominants and there's two more minor sixes obviously, but I just wanna show you just that that's what I would do for these. And if you notice, it's gonna give you so many different variations, so limitless amounts of things to do. So the most important thing that you could take from this lesson is no more thinking about things as chords. Think scales. Scales are more important than chords. Scales are way more important than chords. And Barry used to teach about that all the time. Scales, he plays scales, not chords. Now, again, this is thinking harmonically. He has a system that he thinks about single note lines, which is in a way much easier, but still really in depth. Okay, so that's another aspect. So don't you know don't think like this is the way we're also going to solo over it we got he has a whole different thing which is like i said in a way it's it's uh simpler but in depth way in depth still so i hope this was useful and i really hope um we start to look at things this way because i i've never seen a system that explains everything this system explains everything I've, heard, I've seen a lot of other systems where they talk about, they put a different scale on top of this, and then if you ask why, they can't tell you why. You can't, they can't tell you why. Barry's system also tells you why. See, it tells you why. That, so to me, that's greater than anything else, at least anything that I know. So um, I hope you enjoyed this, and please check out my friend Thomas's, Thomas Eccles' channel, Labyrinth of Limitations, because I think besides Barry, he's really shown me the most about this stuff, especially on our instrument. And I'm really uh, forever indebted to him for that because it's made me a better player. And uh, like I said, I, th I think he really knows the most about this stuff on this instrument. So enjoy practicing your scales, not your chords. Until next time.